we have done it in 21 and we are committed to drive this in a way that we create an opportunity for educational institutions to come together and share insights with respect to what's happening in the industry. Uh, I have a very, very unique panel as well as I have got a lot of people on the panel to drive this discussion forward because this discussion related to decoding the ingredients of a successful environment strategy, I think it's a very key for any educational institutions who is driving enrollments uh, for uh, either their universities or their schools or their uh, study abroad programs. So if you look at our panel broadly, uh, we have got university participation, we have got school participation as well as we have study abroad participation as well. Aside of that, uh, very happy to announce that we have got couple of people on the panel who have been just nominated as a Fulbright scholar, scholars for US. Uh, most of them are going, uh, Dr. Singh as well as Dr. Sandeep, they are going there. Uh, I think you guys are going today, right? Or next week, 10th, 10th, yeah. It's a very prestigious, I think, scholarship for uh, anybody who's driving integration with across the globe in terms of your US Connect as well as taking Indian education forward with respect to uh, going places. Now I'm going to kind of straight away jump into the discussion. Uh, we'll have a discussion around the enrollment strategy and I would like because we've got a lot of panelists so I would like to give opportunity to each one of you to talk about your journey, what you have seen, what you have done in your organization and how you have uh, driven enrollments particularly. Uh, straight forward, I'll go to uh, Dr. Sandeep first and I'll ask him the question with respect to sir, what do you think that what role does branding play in enrollment strategy for any organization, any educational organization. So that will help a lot with respect to what's happening across educational institutions. So keep in mind, sir, universities as well as other organizations. First of all, uh, thank you, Merito and uh, Mr. Vikram for inviting me and giving me an opportunity. And to the other people who are on the you know, audience side that this is very important topic across the world, be it universities, be it schools, or even preschools. That's very important to discuss that what are the factors uh, you know, that helps us to devise a mechanism for enrolling the students. Now, each mechanism will be different based on the institution. So what I feel is, you know, uh, when as a parent or as a student, somebody is going to choose either a school or a university, first of all, uh, they will look at the reputation of the institution. So reputation of the institution is very important. And each university or institute, most of the time, my opinion would be on the university side because that's what I have the experience for. So uh, students, you know, look at the university's reputation and based on that, university must uh, retrospect themselves and then devise a process of outreach and their admission process in such a way that you know students are attracted towards them and for that you know leadership of the university matters a lot and how leadership you know involves themselves with the admissions and outreach team so that you know uh, students are clearly understanding that what this university is giving for them so uh, according to me these are the two parameters which is very important and third thing that is you know keeping time in mind the digital integration in today's era is very important and that's where the kind of integration of the business processes across uh, in your institution how you are implementing it because we know that whatever product we will take it will not give you everything what you want because each institution is unique and hence you know people involved on the technology side how they leverage it how they integrate the business processes and how you are facing your you know technology towards the parents and the students uh, be it uh, digital marketing be it a visual content or even the simple interaction when students are coming onto your website and filling up the form and uh, this is a uh, game changer for anyone in today's SM arena, that's what I call, that is social media arena. So how you are integrating your uh, processes and uh, that's where, you know, Merito is also playing a bigger role for all the institution across the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. In your experience uh, in KN, because I know that you have to build now in a big way. So 
What is you? What have you done in the past, and what is your experience to build the institution? Uh, thank you, Vikram. We are living in an age of discontinuity, which change is compulsory. And I think it's a constant accept change. As the same, the Merito is accepting change. We are also accepting change, and we are working on that with the different strategies also. Apart from that, as per my opinion, as in a, any academic process or academic institutions, we can uh, categorize in a three particular processes. One is inbound activities, second is process, and third is outbound activities. Inbound activities with marketing, admissions, and all processes with academic processing and, and extracurricular activities. And third is uh, outbound activities, placement, internship, and we can have uh, internationalization and all these outbound activities. Now, thing is that if you are considering that institution, higher education institution, it is categorized in different categories. There are particular three categories. Because thing is that all uh, enrollment strategy is not going to fit with the different phases. Like I am in the phase one. From the, my inception, there are zero to three years. That is I'm usually called phase one. But the institu in, uh, institution doesn't have any legacy. They do not have a fine tune their processes. It's phase two, where there were three to 20 years, they are at least in growth stage. And apart from that last is that, that is a more than 20 years, they are matures. Now the different strategies, enrollment strategies that are different for the, all the phases. Like I have one of the example, I like to call it even offering the courses. In phase one, if you like to offer the courses, a trending course I have to go. Like as per the data, last the 35% enrollment ratio is higher in a data science course, is it in the trend? So I have to offer such type of courses. While I am in the phase two, where I then grow stage, I have to offer courses with add-on value, where we can go for case studies, some of the add-on credits my students can earn. And apart from that phase three, I have to offer the different specializations. That is one of the parameters that are offering the course. Second is the tangible outcomes of intangible services. Like in the phase one, what's too tangible? So I have to tell them what's the recognitions I have it. Because students and experience will come and they'll also ask about that. You do have uh, uh, compliances or not? Apart from the phase two, I have to go for that my professors because my process is very much fine-tuned. Fine so I can showcase to the social media. I can give it the wider range of the uh, people where I can showcase the different practices. So it is going to be very much tangible processes. Third in that, if I have a, in a in simple tangible outcomes with the phase three, so where my, my, my professors, they have to go for their consultations. They can showcase the industry practices where they are having consultations or not. So enrollment strategy, two parameters I have discussed. That is, we can say offering the courses, tangible outcome of services, and third is infrastructure. Where I like to talk about the infrastructure like a CRM. In phase one, definitely we have to go for the Marito 2017 journey to 2023, the seven years journey. And we have to at least a big round of uploads for them also because of that we this uh, chapters also. So, so the CRM, how they are going to help us? Because our admission process is not fine-tuned. We are in the phase one. So definitely we need to take a help from the CRM where my admission process would be very, very easy, very smooth, and my uh, experience will have a wonderful experiences also. Second infrastructure is in phase two, where I have in the growth stage, my institution in growth stage, then I'll have to go for hybrid mode. The certain thing is that my particular resources, I need to go for the hybrid mode. I have to go for offline, online, Online both where I can showcase my academic practices because that is already processes has been established and on uh, outbound activities already is there the testimonial of students also I can showcase phase three that is a wonderful phase where the maturity is also infrastructures we have to develop with the online each and every courses need to be online so these are the three aspects there are more others but more speakers over here that we'll discuss later thank you Vikram thank you very much to given me opportunity so we have a couple of views from university side. Uh, let's go and talk to the school side actually first. <laughs> sir, what has been your experience? Because see, sir, in we have got huge competition at the college level. In school level, I think the demand is more than the supply. What has been your strategy at Calorex Group, sir, in terms of enrollment and why branding plays a very important role? Thank you for this opportunity. Om Sri Guru Pyonamaha. You're asking a question to a guy who has been marketing schools for 27 years. So, I agree with two of the speakers here. One, brand is very important. First and the foremost, brand, right? Second, I totally agree with what Dr. Apul was said. It's about the maturity model, right? For us, if you talk about in our organization, we are a 60 plus institution organization, of which about say eight or 10 of them are about 25 plus years, 
so we are in the third phase of maturity right there i need a no paper form kind of a stuff to reject students i mean let me be <laughs> let me be honest with you because of the 3000 or 4000 or 5000 entrants in the form of uh, forms about 2 uh, or 1000 get rejected then from the 1000 odd we select about 400 uh all the people assembled here if you have multiple institutions the best thing to do is the excess of one institution is the input to the other institution so you have to find out ways and means of how to capture the excess of the other institutions so that your the second you know, third institutions get filled up automatically that is one of our primary strategy right anything excess of our flagship school we try to fill it through the other schools right second is as aksar rightly said he said leadership i would say culture what is the culture of the organization right when you talk about culture it percolates to each and everything that you do it 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 percolates to the brand strategies that you use it percolates to the hoarding that you put up it percolates to the guard who is you know kind of making you welcome into the school he it percolates to the person who is offering you water at the reception and it percolates to the receptionist who is taking care of you at the reception right so it's about the culture how you develop then it's about the one language of the culture so if you speak that my school is the best everybody in the institution has to speak my school is the best even if one person says x minus y then you're gone right that is how a brand is built right so three things basically the name that a reputation then the culture and then people behind it so these are the three things you need to focus upon when i say culture integration automation everything comes in and everything has to be seamless you can't have multiple softwares multiple things one is maintaining excel other guy is maintaining something else no that doesn't work one seamless flow of integration that's the only way to succeed that's what thank thank you much thank you so much sir we can quickly go and check so largely if you see uh, if i have to call mr kunal and mr rupesh in on this discussion they largely focus on the study abroad space where students are going outside of india so what has been your experience mr rupesh and mr kunal i'll come to you later in terms of building up because here if you see on this side of the table largely if you are a school you have to manage the relationship for 12 years with the student if you are a university it is for 2 3 4 years depending on the program but your touch point largely with the student is only in that period when they are actually preparing to go abroad or or take that admission and i know that there are other things as well but largely that's the touch point from where you drive that relationship what has been your experience in the study abroad space yeah. for us also like most of the parameter are similar as like the student is the core for all of us means uh, student and success of student is the core for all of us so uh, second point is like deliver what you promise like it's same for the education institute and same for us as well uh, then third is matching student with his profile and aspiration like student can match to stanford or harvard or student can match to average institution it depends on student profile and aspiration uh, third is team building as we all do like once we grow like we have to build the team and nurture them fourth is uh, system and processes like it's important for all of us and to manage the system and processing using crm using apis using now nowadays we are all using ai as well to fast track our work so i think most of these things are similar only the difference i see is the policy changes like policy changes when we deal with the countries abroad is constant so we have to like it's like kind of work the lawyers do as well so we are kind of counselors as well as lawyer to understand those changes and how it's impact to the student and all this you can say build the branding like what you deliver is kind of one ing ingredient of branding another is success of student we market the success of student so other students know 
those success stories. And uh, the final is personalization. Like each student is different, so we have to personalize our services. in US before building your company here. What has been your experience on this? Um, thank you, Vikram, sir, for that question. First of all, it's a great honor being with such experienced people. I feel uh, very honored to be part of this discussion. Uh, it's one of the only places where I'm feeling a little young because with students now, I'm feeling a little older every day when I meet younger mm -hmm. students. So uh, I think most of these points have been covered. I think cultural thing is very important. Inbound, outbound strategy, the three-step process is fantastic. Where the inbound is, you talk about the market research and do the data driving. The technology part is the second step. Use those data to drive decisions every day. And using help of uh, things like Merito, it makes a lot uh, jobs easier. And through those data, the third step, the outbound thing could be create a personalized approach and send students outside. How we are different from schools and university, I was just thinking is uh, if there are uh, uh, schools and universities here, the thing is they only have to worry about their one thing, which is their admission process. Very clear, ye percentage hai, ye student hai. And our intake time is this much time. I could be wrong, please. We deal with over 1,500, 1,600 institutions across five, six countries. US admission process, Canada admission process, student requirements. So it's a very complicated process, which not me, even the team of Merito realized once we uh, onboarded. So it's a very difficult situation to put on board. On top of that, uh, there are a lot of uh, consultants that are coming up every day. Just in Ahmedabad, I talk about there are officially 1,400, 1,500 plus consultants, right? So, in the first time, now I think consultants have overtaken them in every part. So, how do you differentiate yourself? That becomes a very key approach, right? When you have an organization for us, where our parents have been in organization for 30 years, how do you differentiate that branding? That comes... Uh, and a student going to multiple places in one day, meeting multiple consultants. So how do you differentiate? So a human person cannot differentiate all the time, right? That's when you need technology to send them emails, send them WhatsApp messages. Uh, the personalized approach when you come to the office, how you are greeted, how much time it takes to waiting also plays a big role. So, uh, and just to talk about numbers, there are like almost 10 lakh students that are going outside every year to study abroad. I was trying to Google the number of students that go to university in India, because I thought that might be an interesting, but I could not find it. I could just find out that uh, in total, there were like 43 million students currently in, in, university. in universities, but not each intake. The, that data is perhaps not available, or that's something that I don't have. So it's a very different approach. And when you have such variable things and a journey that as you say, uh, we keep on churning out more numbers. It's very necessary to have with us data that uh, changes every day and student behavioral patterns which change according to the rules and regulations of other countries as well. So in 2017-18, as per the AISC data, if you consider, so we have a 36.6 million enrollment. And it's in 2021 and 22, that is the enrollment is a 43.6. So annual growth rate it is a generally 4.24. It is good also in higher education institutions. So that is, we have a more than 1,170 universities in India. and in Gujarat, we have more than 100 universities. So enrollment is about, that is one of the we can say, crucial factors now. Thank you. I think that is why the focus of the government is largely to increase the GER from 27 percent to 45 odd percent because we have a lot of dropouts post the uh, class 12 uh, and I think that focus will bring in more universities. The existing universities will start offering more programs. So, sir, coming to you, sir, mm. what has been your experience before we get into the discussion with respect to personalization? Because I hear a lot about personalization in the enrollment strategy and I'll come to you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I am representing Kaushalya, the Skill University and the government of Gujarat. I think one of the panelists was from the government sector, but I migrated from private to public, so it's a new journey after 23 years. Uh, first of all, I was very touched by 
Mr. Raj, uh, Mr. Kovid Raj about the journey of Marito. And I'm very fond of pushing and supporting uh, new ventures, especially uh, new if you become a unicorn in due course of time. So I would uh, convey my best wishes to Marito. And uh, thank you for inviting me here and uh, part of this very esteemed panel, Harsh Rahul who initiated the talk and Vikram who is with us. So all of you and my fellow panelists, my perspective about enrollment uh, is almost the same as all of you have from branding to journey and to the last which I always talk about as a student of marketing and strategy that end of the day what matters is ROI. Nobody talks about that, but then because the type of institutions which have been built up in India from Ahmedabad University to Ashoka to Flame University to Royal Global University in Guwahati and from a heritage institute in Calcutta to a small institution in Ahmedabad, everybody's ecosystem is different, everybody's ROI is different, everybody's financial modeling is different, everybody's financial growth is different. Some people are short-term players, some people are long-term players, some people's strategy is no strategy at all and some people have a bright strategy with deep pockets some people don't have deep pockets so whatever we'll talk about will not be fit for one institution the institution sitting out here has to drive and find out the best out of this panel what is the best fit for them and therefore if I may uh, talk about uh, especially enrollment management, which is the thing now. Enrollment management is a big game where we have so many KPIs and we have all the statistics, AISHE data is available on the website yesterday. I have seen for only till 21, 22. After that, the data will be uploaded in due course of time. And the number of universities and Gujarat and uh, GER of Gujarat and everything is there. And we see India is growing, we see numbers are growing, we are going to be Vishwaguru or developed nation by 2047. All these things depend upon, in my opinion, the branding doesn't depend upon only one thing that you have number of recruit, uh, recruitments and number of uh, seats or number of seats filled and as he rightly said how many rejections. Rejection is a very important part of branding. If you do not have rejection, whatever strategy we will follow, it will fail. This is my first thought to all of you. I have seen from MIT where I was the vice senior vice president to my other institution. If you do not reject, even if you have 100 seats and you get only 100 application, reject 20. If you are not rejecting, you are failing day by day. This is the first thing which nobody will talk about. I am telling upfront in front of you. Number two, you have to have some very iconic schools in the university system, some very icon iconic departments in the college, like some voices they have in the name of, as he was rightly saying, one institution spillover will be taken by other institution. Same way in the universities, spillover of the bigger institution, the center of excellences can spill over to the other. If you're going for some voices law, if you're going for some voices management, everybody doesn't get a position there. If you keep on increasing the number of seats in some voices in those department there will be no spillover so you have to restrict yourself sometime even if you have high demand you have to restrict and make your center of excellence and spillover can be taken by other departments and finally because if I'll keep on speaking professor can speak for hours so I'll stop very quickly and I will say that in that journey if you can find because for all of us and I think for all of us not, nothing is more important than success of a student and the success of the student is the success of the state and success of the nation. So whatever strategy, enrollment, merito, everyone is doing, keep one thing in my, my, your mind always, that you have a right fit. Don't push a student in the name of marketing, in the name of CRM, in the name of EOI, in the name of enrollment, to such places where they are not fit because that will definitely bring our nation down and that will bring your branding down and that will make that a student fail in their life. Please don't do that with that 
particular thing I stop and I request all of you to do the best of the marketing but there's nothing better than called ethical marketing which I used to teach 25 years back and people used to laugh and I think today I can say with proud only ethical marketing prevails in the long run all short term gainers and short term people with you know iski topi uske sir uski topi uske sir will not survive for long and only the ethical institution will survive for a longer time uh, this is maybe a little heavy but i think i need to say this and therefore i said that thank you so much it is heavy sir it is not at all heavy sir because we have seen sir in the education space a lot of organization and one of the biggest organization failing in india and it is kind of having a rippling effect on the brand image of india as well as on the students uh, sir what has been your experience on largely personalization because i think it's it plays a very important role in your enrollment strategy and karnavati being at the forefront what all you have done and how you have navigated this sir? yeah I, i'll come to personal uh, first like like to thank each one of you uh, team medito especially vikram ji fairs and hers like you know so it's a tremendous uh, job that you guys have been doing like you know bringing all the you know educationalists together in the same platform so thank you for that and uh, choosing me for the you know panelist so moving uh, with the branding i'd just like to add on few things like you know branding can be uh, cannot be just done in one single approach it has to be 360 degree uh nowadays like we all talk about meta and all this like you know for that matter the creative has to be symmetrical it cannot be just atl btl and the ttl activities uh, what we traditionally had been doing it is now more digital since covid we had been witnessing so branding is something which has to be essentially done 360 degree and coming to the strategies like you know has been already covered most of the things that has you know extremely well spoken about the culture and everything so the thing that i personally believe like with my you know 20 years journey in the education domain uh, we have been like you know uh, meeting the channel partners the schools and every different approach we had been setting the first thing is like you know the student has to be oriented the prospective student i mean to say has to be oriented from the you know grassroots level that is from the 9 10 11 and 12 they has to be oriented about the trending course so i was talking about the trend like you know something like you know data analytics now the trending courses is something like you know if we talk about the orthodox the stereotype courses if like you know in india there is a culture like you know we we talking about medical engineering advocacy or maybe cscpt or cs for that matter so now the trend is more like if we even if we ask chat gpt today what are the trending courses where we should be you know thinking about making our career the answers would be certainly cyber security forensic science data science robotics cloud computing cryptography blockchain etc and if if you talk about design we we actually primarily in karnavati university we have colleges like six constant colleges where design is our forte uh, i believe like uid is the brand which uh, is like you know carrying us 2011 when we started uid we also didn't knew like you know this is going to be a brand in a, you know just a decade time uh today like you know sir was talking about rejecting how powerful is rejection 8000 odd students today applies for the uid design aptitude test and of which we hardly select 550 600 you know like it can you know combines visual communication it combines animation and motion graphics that also like you know game design now if we talk about i was talking about from 9 to 12th grade the student has to be oriented about the trending courses why because that is something we need to educate the children because that's the possibility of bringing them out from the you know orthodox and the stereotype mindset at the same time if we take them through some kind of let's say workshops if they are doing the first hand experience of how of what fashion like today if i talk about design people only can relate fashion design and interior design not something beyond that but design is everywhere you talk about automobile engineering but nobody heard about automobile designing today a designer's role is you no know, primary then after they complete the uh, the blueprint then only the engineers will come into the picture and they will start adapting and they will execute and it, they will produce so that is how it can be automobile or transportation design that is technically known as mobility design 
if we talk about let's say uh, like you know other aspects product design anything that is tangible is a product so these are the things we need to you know emphasize amongst the prospective students and that is how a brand is being created and the strategies at the same time of you know uh, like you know taking the brand to the prospective students and the parents is very simple now coming to the uh, personalization part personalization is something what we technically like you know uh, understand is the customized solution right so that is what i would thing like you know we have to create the sops primarily the sops for every particular stakeholder has to be properly defined and the flow chart has to be created for every module the first point of contact with the student is the application form that should be easier when the application form if it is complicated then the student is getting the difficulties and the challenges and they might you know come out of that particular platform so the crm here is the role of the crm how crucial and the crm is not only integrating the internal or departments within an organization starting from the call center to the digital marketing team and also the data mesh management team plus it is also giving the landing page to the prospective students and their whatever like you no know, guardian so if that the first point of contact the personalization has to be very very simple that is what we personally believe and starting from there from the personalization like you know starting from the application form till the all the communications related to the selection process the selection process has to be like you know if we talk about rejection then there has to be certain parameters how will be choosing the students it can be a written exam followed by personal interview now this process has to be intimated timely and in a correct manner to the prospective students so that it is easier for them to interpret plus at the same time they has to be under you know given an idea about the scholarships and everything so this is what i personally believe is personalization is very very significant and crm here plays a very important role because all these things has to be automated it cannot be because when you expect a volume of or chunk of applicants it cannot be you know manually done it has to be aut automated and that is what i personally believe i think very well said very well put with respect to what you have been doing डॉक्टर बतेश सर आप मतलब फ्रॉम क्रिएटिंग द इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड रीचिंग एट अ पिनेकल एज ए चेयर एंड लीड ऑफ जैन एजुकेशनल ट्रस्ट सर आपने तो सर सब कुछ देखा है कि कैसे चल रही थी मार्केटिंग क्या चेंजेस आए हाउ द इंस्टीट्यूशन आर मूविंग फॉरवर्ड सर आपका क्या एक्सपीरियंस रहा है वट इज बिन योर एक्सपीरियंस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ग्रेट मॉर्निंग टू टीम मैरिटो Marito Valvisers and very learned panelist. Yes, one thing I liked very much first. Let me share with you people. Okay, be whatever the tagline or whatever line these people are using, great things for the great people. That is really touched me. Yes, great things for the great people. It's a really wonderful things. Yes, uh, and uh, before I say something, let me be honest. i am coming from a small city jamnagar i studied throughout in a gujarati medium even today we are running some schools and colleges around 20 those are exclusive english medium my dear friends my personal opinion is this ke normally we are first across world in population 60000 plus higher education institutes are running in india 60000 plus every year around 2.5k new institutes are coming new schools colleges higher education are coming in india around 4.5 crores students are joining higher education these are the really wonderful we can say it's a proud of india but somewhere what is pinching me our dropout ratio is 25% these are the facts what i'm speaking now our dropout ratio is 25% one more thing whatever uh, uh, we are not the uh, let me tell one more thing uh, we are not the any private universities we are affiliated to some universities we are affiliated to some boards maybe it's a state board maybe it's a cbse board so what happened today basically ke whenever students after passing 12th standard or after passing ug pg whenever he or she goes in the practical world will he or she succeed it's a big question mark for me 
whatever needs are there from the industries, whatever needs are there from the anybody, are we able to survive or the students will stand on his, he is able to get his bread and butter? Question mark. Even after the three decades experience, I really feel sorry. Because somewhere, some students is discontinue the studies, I am responsible. I think somewhere I am responsible. Some students are becoming or doing some crime. I think educational maybe method system may be responsible, but somewhere I think if I, uh, as a connected to education somewhere, I think somewhere I am responsible. Some students are failing. Some students are committing committing suicide. So I think somewhere. I don't know about you, but somewhere I think hey, we are, somewhere I am responsible. So what is there, basically? The system is working. Students are getting admissions, we people are teaching, we are giving them certificate, we are giving them degree, we are giving them results, everything is fine, very fine. But what happened? Okay, whatever results uh, they are getting today, they are getting one page result, maybe two page result we are giving. I am talking regarding the mark sheets. So somewhere I think basically we people, should work on that. Okay, whenever it is in my hand, I don't. I don't blame on the by government. I don't blame on the by uh, parents. I don't. I don't say okay, these people are responsible. What is in my hand that we have to do? And prop, slowly, slowly, we people started. That I'm saying we to people. Okay, let's have a let's have a wonderful 360 degree report for the each and every students. And it should start according to my opinion. It should start from the grade one only. Because whatever he is doing in the subjects, definitely school people, teachers, principal will write. But are we able to write his all over progress? Are we able to write this behavior? Are we able to write by how many activities he was present in a year? Are we able to write by how many, how many disciplinary or how many good things he has done across the year? We need to also write by how many sports he has played, how many annual functions he has attended, how many functions or co scholastic activities he has performed or she has performed. And what are his plus, definitely we should write. And what are his, somewhere we need to, we don't write negative, but at least we should write by these are the things where before he go in a practical world, he need to work. Before we buy, suppose uh, simple things, we have, all of us have the mobile phone. Before we buy the mobile phone, what we do? Is it operating or not? We check it. We check. It's running or not? Do we check? Before we sending, before we hand over the marks to the students, before we give degree to students, do we check? Okay, will he survive in the practical world or not? We don't do. Normally, many people don't do. So this is my duty. That is our duty, first of all. Okay, but let's work for that only. Okay, but our bacha, our kids, before they go for the practical world, let we make them let me make them uh, 360 degree by wherever he go, at least whatever report we are giving as an educational institute, it will be the uh, wonderful report, it will include everything. He is good in that and he need to work on that. So definitely before he will start his practical life, maybe as a service people, maybe as an entrepreneur, at least somebody will guide him or at least he himself will analyze. Because this was my report. On grade number one, this was my report in grade number two, this is my report in a by UG level. So this is my personal suggestions, what I want to tell you. Let's work on that. Yeah. Every institute, we people have started to working on this since last two years. But every organization, every school, every college should go not on the one line, one line or one page uh, report card. Let us prepare a report card, maybe like thesis or whatever. It's a all over uh, report will give uh, extraordinary things for the people in his life he will never fail at least this is my personal suggestion one is that second short suggestion is this definitely uh, many learned people are there and i agree with the people those they are speaking again my second and last suggestion one line is this whatever we do inside school inside college inside university our student at the central, we can ask our mind, we can ask our heart, our student at the central, if they are not, then we should not do that. Whatever we do, students should be at the central. Okay. Students should be at the central, whatever you do, maybe, but students should be at the central and you kindly do whatever, maybe from the A to Z, from the top to bottom, but student must be at the central, otherwise what happened? 
एज आई टॉक द वे फिगर इन टू डेटा इज दैट के भाई फोर पॉइंट फाइव करोड़ स्टूडेंट्स आर ज्वाइनिंग एवरी ईयर हायर एजुकेशन एंड अराउंड फिफ्टीन लेख स्टूडेंट्स आर लिविंग इंडिया दे आर लिविंग फिफ्टीन लेख स्टूडेंट्स दे आर लिविंग बिकॉज दे हैव सम वेर कैपेसिटी सपोज टेक मी वेरी पॉजिटिवली सपोज अदर स्टूडेंट्स हैव द कैपेसिटी आई डाउट के दिस रिजल्ट मे बी नॉट ओनली फिफ्टीन लेख्स मे बी वन पॉइंट फाइव करोड़ स्टूडेंट्स मे बी रन आउट फ्रॉम द इंडिया Be- because of something, because of the financial things, they are stopping. Because we have number of number of things are there in India that we have to work it out. And uh, somewhere even I am finding out since last one two days, NEP is there, and many of the expert people have gone through this NEP. I really like. By th- we may go back to our uh, grassroots and whatever our guru parampara was there. And uh, one last thing, by two things, I wanted to tell again. first thing i told okay let's don't stop ourselves for giving one page report let's give all over 360 report and second suggestion my is this only any organization any school any college students should be at the central thank you very much so i i just want to add two points here related to the personalization and uh, take a case study of navarashtra university i can give you 30 data points that we have you know mapped for uh, personalization but i would like to you know add two points here that when we talk about personalization let's say student has a phobia and we call a circle of care as a process in the university so if a uh, student has a phobia of particular course let's say mathematics generally students are having a phobia of mathematics so we have introduced it's not new but you know we were the you know first one to introduce the non gpa course so students take in our university lot of elective courses by the way architect goes to the management management go to the engineering likewise so we have uh, across the discipline uh, flexibility but when a student takes the non gpa course and uh, you know he is being encouraged to take that course in such a way that even if the result is bad you know he will not hamper his uh, uh, overall cgpa and that's a very western system we have to appreciate that right so we have seen that 30% rise in our students who have ventured out to the courses where they were not comfortable so we have put on them on a you know out of comfort zone and take those courses and the second thing that i initiated for my experiences because i have failed myself many a times whether it is an academic whether it is a personal or professional so we have thought in our academic council and i suggested an idea and i am very thankful to the academic council who appreciated that why do we write what sir says that you know grade sheet is very important for a student transcript is very important and all the universities including us used to write fail as a grade now tell me who else in this auditorium who has not failed in their life at any point of time right so we have removed the f grade we have removed the f grade from navrachna university's transcript and we are writing an i that is needs improvement and all of us needs improvement so these are the two data points i can talk about the personalization right. i can go on talking to the panelists and i know that we are running of out of time as well but last question before we close the panel and i'll ask everyone very quickly two important data points which you measure to ensure that your organization is running successfully both from an enrollment point of view as well as as an organization so very quickly sir you can give two uh, metrics which you track to drive this and all of you can share uh, there are i think many metrics available from enrollment metrics to passing out percentage uh, to drop out metrics so all these is like normal but i will give two new metrics which i was writing and trying to do during the panel discussion one is roi matrix which nobody talks about that if you have a roi matrix the student is invested how much time and money in the education and what is the outcome with respect to his career and growth and path though all 1920 matrix available on web they somehow have this but not direct and one is that roi matrix and second matrix i just designed and devised is right fit matrix which i already said right fit matrix uh, no merito also don't talk about it i would request merito to also evolve to the right fit matrix means the student which has got engagement with x 
institution in X course is a right fit for that course and that institution, if somehow that right fit matrix will also come into picture, that will be again leading to the growth of the nation and the success of the students. So I'm adding two matrix to the 19 matrix I, r I have read on the website and other places. And this may be, if at all you find it and use it, use with my name in due course of time. Thank you so much. Sir. So as an organization, we believe a lot in trust and customer satisfaction. For us, these two parameters are very, very high. So two things that we always measure is if there's a dropout or a TC. In, in the school parlance, we call it TC. TCs happen because of dissatisfaction, majorly. Right? Transfer cases are very few, but otherwise TCs happen because of dissatisfaction. If there is dissatisfaction among or discontentment among your students, that means something that we have not done. As Sir said, that means that we have not kept the child at the center. Right? So one thing we do measure is was what is that which has not happened due to which that is a dissatisfaction. That is one thing which we measure very strong. Then we also measure if somebody is walked in. And if somebody has been given an experience, and if that doesn't convert into an admission, what is the reason behind it? That means somewhere you have not been able to touch, move, and inspire. So we always move, believe in touch, moving, and inspiring, right? So what is the reason, What even after so many calls, even after so many engagements, even after so many visits, if there's not, there's not something that's happened, you know, what is it that we are not able to satisfy you with? So that's the second parameter we always monitor. And let me tell you, anybody wanting to do it, uh, Without uh, technology integration, people, I mean, not that I'm sitting in uh, Evolve's panel, I'm talking about it. You use Evolve or use anything, but you have to have technology integration. Otherwise, monitoring this manually through an Excel or PyOcha chart is a difficult task. Yeah, so thank you. And dropouts. Yeah, basically. very, 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 very important aspects. Uh, so the first thing that I would think, like, you know, it's uh, more the time we spent with the prospective students. I always talk to my team, like, you know, it's uh, counseling. Counseling is not about information passing. It's uh, understanding the requirements of the, you know, prospective students, spending sufficient time and giving, you know, we are talking about personalization, so customized solution. Uh, so that's the first thing. And second, I would certainly believe like, you know, the rejection, like, you know, rejection makes the brand more powerful. So automatically, like you know, the bigger pool of applicants that we get to achieve by the end of the season. And based on that, the seats has to be limited because quantity and quality, both the things cannot be uh, serviced together. So either you have to compromise on one aspect. So rejection and of course, like you know, spending sufficient time with the prospective students while counseling. Uh, I am just a differ. Rejection is a functionality, it's not going to be strategies. It's a phase wise, you have to adopt it even. Many stakeholders and the managers of admission over here, they understand this one very well. <laughs> well let's say about the rejections policies. Apart from that, sir, rightly mentioned about that, then a single word, single statement I like to call it, it is operation succeed patient died phenomena. We have to out from that. <laughs> Process is very much important. What are the processes we are doing with the academic institutions? Like uh, we are in the phase one. So my institution adopt the three-tier employability system because think we do not have a process to showcase, no tangible processes. We do not have the academic process we can showcase to the, my students. So we have gone with the three-tier employability system. If you join us, then first phase, if you want to go for the job also, within four years, we'll go give a skill set which is helpful to you to get the job. Apart from that, if you want to go for a traditional businesses also, we have that licensing with the different government and that begins venture capitalists where you can get the finance and you can have the traditional business and apart from that if you have a novel idea then definitely you can get the startups and within the startup we have an incubation center so three tier employability systems after joining us also you will have that employabilities so thank you very much thank you very much to give me the opportunity thanks a lot hello yes again it's a personal normally we say, I really proud to say I am Indian and Gujarati uh, means But what I wanted to tell you people, across the world, happiness index is calculated. I don't know how many of you are aware. Happiness index is calculated across the world. And sorry to say, we are, India people are at, the rank is around 126. 
I repeat, India's rank is 126. So again, it's my personal opinion. I believe the person, those are connected, people, those are working with the education, people, those are working with the kids, they should be really happy. I repeat, they should be really happy. If you are not happy with the kids, then there is no place in the world where you can be happy with the kids. So I complete this. I believe in the team. I share these three words with the team. Be happy, stay happy, and share happiness. Thank you very much. It's always difficult when, you know, cursor run from X to Y to answer difficult uh, uh, metrics. But, uh, you know, three metrics I had decided. One of uh, the metric, sir, has already said that at Norwestern University, we keep on checking the happiness index of our all the stakeholders. But I would like to concentrate on two, uh, you know, uh, important key metrics that we look at. And one is at the entry and another is at the exit of the student life cycle. So whenever student comes here, so lead to conversion, cost acquisition, everybody look at it. But what we do is lead to quality and we have defined our quality parameters. So quality of course is the academic qualification of a student, but quality in terms of inclusivity quality in terms of diversity quality in terms of diversity means what so who is coming you know from the local then who is coming from the regional and who is coming from you know the national level so if we get a balance out of it then we feel that you know our quality metrics is getting improved because this metric gives me an insight that what could be my next year strategy if i do not get students you know out of state then it will be very difficult for university to say that they are at the national level. So that is lead to quality uh, metrics. And when we you know, uh, see that students are graduating from here, at that time we see that uh, what is the acceptance ratio of my students at the better institution than me? And if it is good, then you know, we see that there is a success in the academic rigor, which we all the year talk about to the students and their parents. So these are the two quality metrics that we look at. Yeah, uh, so in our industry, right match is most important. As like right match to the course, right match to the uh, destination, right match to the institution. So whether it is right match or not, that's our core. And uh, second is success. Uh, you can say happiness index after a year or two, like whenever students come back to India to meet parents and visitors and share how it's go well. So those kind of things are like second metrics for us. Even we take survey after, like say for a student going for master, we take survey after two years, like what happened after masters. If students go for bachelor, we take survey after four years. So uh, we call it as happiness index. Like if student is happy with our services, like counseling service, uh, psychometric test and everything, then at the end of the, uh, like uh, his study, he will be happy. So those two, I can relate that. Yeah, um, yeah again, difficult, as you said, to be the last person. <laughs> but I'll take it. So uh, when, uh, when I remember uh, Saurabh and uh, I think Nitin, when they first came to Rajkot in my office, and we had already onboarded, yet they bought a book, uh, which was a brochure. And I opened, the f and on the first page, there was a quote that, 80% of your business will come from 20% of your leads, so, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, that stayed with me for a very long period of time. And today, even uh, my counselors, that's the thing that we try to focus upon, that, uh, you know, although all the leads that come, you can do the same processes on all the leads, but it's not necessarily so to do so. For me, the most important part when I onboarded was, and that's one of the only things uh, that I see in my uh, merit of whenever I log in is that funnel on the first page, right? My thing is to just see the funnel. Uh, apart from our processes are very different. Uh, our thing is more like Google, right? Google has this thing that uh, when you search, they want you to show the search so fast, right? Google is one of the only companies which wants to keep you less time on their page so that you have newer searches. So for us to, for the student to come into our system and leave as fast as possible is very important, right? So that is our turnaround time. Since the time the student has joined a person, 
how fast have we got his visa approved, right? So that's the conversion that I am always looking for, right? And not uh, anything else because uh, that gives us a very good optimization of the efficiencies of my team, right? Because sometimes it's easy to measure data, but not easy to measure the processes of human capabilities, right? That's also something that we can try as a suggestion that Merito try that each login that we do try to record the efficiencies of uh, that particular person uh, or that particular counselor and that way that would help us make better decisions as to how we can serve the student better and optimize our courses that way. So my thing is the turnaround time if you want uh, me to uh, put it as simple as that. Mr. Kunal mentioned about Nitil and Saurabh, they are mm. uh, Merito resources Very. who had gone to Sir's office to pitch them about Merito and then he got onboarded on our platform. Wonderful. So we are at the close, Sir, you <laughs> asked for a minute. A, a minute, yeah. just a minute. One is that uh, this uh, concept of student centricity. I have my experience, so I'm just sharing with you in addition. Student centricity should be very cautiously done. A student centricity should be centricity towards meritorious and bright student, not to those students who are not there for education in the institutions. So this is something I would say that I have turned around one institution that a student was student institution was student centric and miserably failed because it was wrong student centric because all those students who are not there for education they were on the central place and the student who actually so gradually that a student failed so we have to be very careful that 20 30 percent top meritorious bright student centric university so just one caution for that and number two about as i'm representing a skill university i take this opportunity 30 seconds to request all of you that this blue collar job and white collar job divide which is uh, allowing our students to do engineering courses in huge number and the students are ready to do a job of 15,000, 20,000, 25,000 per month. In comparison to that, the jobs which are available in the skill from furniture manufacturing and design to drone training uh, to related to plumbing, high rise building plumbing, steel technology, their beginning job is 40,000 to 50,000 per month. So my humble request because India by and large is a very aspirational society and that is not good. We aspire too much for our children. We don't let them do hard work. We don't try to teach them to do hard work. They are not ready to stand on the floor of the machine. They are not ready to stand on the bridge construction site. And everybody wants to do computer engineering and design. And our universities are keep on increasing. There are 22,000 students studying in lovely professional university only in computer science. What kind of you know structure we are creating? What kind of knowledge we are imparting? Thing. So my humble request is that if th those 50% of engineering student with aspiration because I'm not selling a skill, I am making career in a skill. So two gentlemen sitting out here and all of you, if you can gradually push the student toward a skill side and that is the mandate of NEP and that is the mandate of the Prime Minister of India, that is the mandate which is reflected from the uh, 15th August on the flag hosting day, we should go for a skill and convert our engineering student to the skilling side. That's a miracle. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I'm really thankful to the panel members for bringing their perspective with respect to not only enrollment strategy, we actually went a lot <laughs> above and below the enrollment strategy. But I think that's insightful for everyone here who is sitting out here. So I'm very, very thankful to all of you for spending your almost an hour here on the stage with us and share your perspective related to what you have done or what you are aspiring to do. So thank you so much everyone you. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.